Hello, everybody. Let's get started. Close that. Go to this. Mirror will begin shortly. One minute. Oh, man, we are not early at all, which is good because I don't really have a lot of predictions or anything for this. What up, crypto? I don't really know what we're going to see. We're going to see first party stuff. Well, I assume we'll finally get a Halo Infinite release date, for the love of God. Uh... As they said, they're not delaying it again. The like game form had a story that they were thinking about delaying it again. Man, everybody uses the same thing and it's bugged. It's so funny. That they were thinking about delaying it again. Uh, instead of basically holding off the co-op campaign. But they chose to launch this year still, just without the co-op campaign. Something else, I don't know where it was. So, we... Better get a release date for that this year if they want to ramp up to it, you know. Or I mean, today we better get a release date for it. I want to see more Stalker 2. I really like that one trailer we saw. That was really cool. At uh, E3. What I'm not excited for is it sounded like from their indie showcase, like at the end, the two streamers they had on there made it sound like they're going to do the same kind of structure for this one, where they've got the two streamers, like, they show the trailer, and then they've got those two streamers on the side reacting to the trailer as it plays again, and then just talking about crap for, like, five minutes. That I'm not excited for. That's going to make this, like, two hours long, like that one was, with, like, seven trailers or something. Still a chance tomorrow? Okay, okay, cool. Yeah, I'll definitely be doing tomorrow's as well. Tomorrow's I'm more excited for. Because that is going to be, I think, two hours long, Keely said, something like that. And uh, that's going to be like, uh, you know, the E3, not E3, whatever, Jeff Keely's Summer Games Fest, somebody calls it. I assume the stream is going to be somewhere to that, where it's just like, here's another announcement, here's another announcement, here's another announcement. World premiere is favorite word. I think I'm going to get, like, some uh, hot wings progressively hotter, and every time he says world premiere, I'm going to eat a hotter wing until I can't breathe by the end of the stream. Flight simulator. Gamescom 2021. Hello, everyone, and okay. welcome to our Gamescom This is not the same structure as their ending. We've got so many great game updates to share with you today. We're talking Age of Empires 4, Psychonauts 2, and my personal favorite, Microsoft Flight Simulator. Later on, Man, we'll I really don't want to see anything with Psychonauts 2. I've avoided so everything with Psychonauts 2 that I can, because I just want to play that game blind as possible. But sure. And also, it literally comes out in, what, cover car for the 11 game hours? Cars. I got five bucks on it being one of those electric scooters that you see piled up on the sidewalk. Will Kate win five bucks? I guess we're about to find out. <laughs> yes, indeed. Our Xbox Plays team will also chat with devs and deep dive into current and upcoming games all week on twitch.tv slash Xbox. Let's get started with Techland and their upcoming zombie parkour sequel, Dying Like 2, Stay Human. Okay. I want to see more of this. I don't really need to see more of this. Hello, I need the I release date confirmed is the main thing, because I feel like design. this is going to slip. And this is David Lubricka, animation director. Hi. We can't wait until December 7th to finally give okay. you Dying Till Light December 7th, for now. Human, the game we have been working on really hard for the last few years. We are hoping the gameplay video you're about to watch will give you a foretaste of parkour and combat systems waiting for you in the game. And we are just about to enter the city fighting our way through its brutal and yeah, dangerous it does seem like streets. It. I think it's... Though, as you will see I'm in a moment, feeling kind of like in my head it's data at this point, advantage. but I don't know. So watch closely, look for special combat and parkour moves, and check out how with just a bit of creativity you can combine the two. Ready? Let's go. Sometimes I wonder what this city looked like before all this. Game looks great. I still need to play the uh, following Probably expansion like before this comes others. out, though. For the first game. I want to, anyways. 
plans, lives. I guess I don't need to. Now it's all gone. The virus started it. But it was the people who made the world the way it is. This city. Villador. They tell me they had a vision. They had hope. But soon, one vision broke into many different ones. Instead of fighting together, yeah, we did finish the main story. So that last mission is a huge letdown. It's so not great. There's some cool parts to it, but the fact that you can't, it's the only thing in the game you can't play co op other than the intro and the final boss fight is just a QTE. Well, it's very disappointing. Now the city is falling. Each time we strike down an enemy, we absorb. But most of the game was very, very fun. But I can't let that happen. God, that looks so fun. At least, not yet. I need the secrets the city holds. Oh, fuck. Hey! Still some rats here. I have to pick a side. The bazaar needs good people. You're doing great so far. Check and see. Bloodborne? Don't do it. Don't do it. Okay, you didn't do it. Everything's fine. They say that great change. They didn't show it, so we didn't do it. Of small gestures. How about this series? I think that's a big concern and why from day one everybody has been like uh, both excited about the game and its potential but also nervous about whether or not it's going to deliver. We'll see about that. Well, that was an exciting trip, wasn't it, Timo? Was there promising those some very big things? Like armor, passing by I mean, like, a game like this that is so expensive to make that's every little bit of it. Dark ages. And to like offer design, one very completely different routes the where they just cut off too. huge swaths of content that stood out to me, is very bold. All those moves that you so the question is, are they putting as much work into so all this content into. that's potentially getting well, cut off as they would if it was just a continuous story? Professional traces, mock-up sessions, and invaluable help from David Or is it going to feel kind of patched and together and weird? In the game, by the way. No, yes, right. And we've got twice the number of parkour moves compared to the first game. And I do think I'll enjoy playing it either way. Trailer. Just because I vault kicks like the gameplay of the first one, it seems like this is just expanded personal. and improved. It brings a whole new fighting style into the game. The player can stagger an enemy and use them to perform further attacks. For example, yeah, exactly. by rebounding from their bodies, jumping of them onto other foes, and so on. I think we captured the movement really well and made it quite simple for the players to perform. I can't wait for them to try it out and tell for themselves how much they loved it. It's definitely going to be useful. The city's buildings are higher than anything we have done before, improving its verticality. Players will need to find a way to reach those tall skyscrapers and other challenging spots too. Then it's good we scattered some helpers around, like a paraglider, which can support players in both parkouring and combat. Exactly, and it's gonna do great, especially in fights against humans, which are more frequent and important than in Dying Light 1. It's been over 20 years since the events from the first game, so people adjusted. They are much bolder yeah. now. If it weren't for the fact that this is a December 7th day, release, I would probably draft this, but and I think I'm that's very worried that it's a this discussion. And I've already got Horizon that I'm almost certainly going to have to remove from my list at this point, even though Sony refuses to confirm that the game is delayed. Everybody Thanks, David. Thank knows you. at this point. Not delayed, but not coming out this year. We only have two drops for the first in our time league. in the storied history of the franchise. Microsoft Flight Simulator launched on a home console with a release on Xbox Series. Did X they? If they did, X I never saw it. I definitely saw a ton of leaks that uh, it's well confirmed basically, like Bloomberg reports and stuff. Simulation translated to the console, but Bloomberg also reported like a hundred times that there was a Switch Pro, and there's no Switch York Pro the yet, at least. York, thank you for being here. 
The I'll last wait for the official the Sony confirmation. Showcase, and it was getting ready it's not like I'm in a rush console. to get that dra extra draft it spot. Great. As you said, the reaction to the Xbox console the launch moment. was uh, was really just amazing. Uh, both from Xbox gamers and from the press, they've been so gracious with their feedback. I don't know if you know, but we, um, Flight Simulator is one of the highest rated games on Xbox this year, which I think is just great validation um, that, the trans that the translation of the simulation to the console has, been, has, has really worked well. Um, our usage numbers are through the roof. You play this uh, game, Crypto? We are absolutely shattering franchise records. I installed I it on my PC when it came out. More people playing and then uh, right before now, even it's, launching, it's and awesome I was like, time. why did I install this? That is awesome. Congratulations on the launch. I installed really? it based, yeah, but Flight Simulator. I installed it based off the hype because the reviews were all right off the charts <laughs> i want to go to the danger zone and i'm sure so it's great for what it is but at the same time i was like so do i want to play a flight simulator um, so do i have any I interest in this no Maverick why did i install this um, the fans are super and then I excited it. they saw the f-18 they can't wait to start flying and uh, as you know it comes out later this year as free dlc alongside the movie but as the movie is still under wraps um, so are we so i can still not tell you that much about it but there's so much else going on even before Maverick. So um, um, Million we are gigs, continuing yeah. to do our monthly big releases that we've been doing for a long time. And next month on September 7th, uh, we are launching World Update 6. And um, this World Update, I mean, you, at the beginning of the show, if you remember, there was a little red plane yeah, flying into yeah. Cologne. Well, we did that because World Update 6 updates that region, the region of Gamescom. So Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And what that means to us is we have new aerial and satellite images. We have a new elevation map that helps us with the mountains. So the Alps actually look awesome now. Um, we, we have new 3D cities like Frankfurt and Wuppertal in Germany. We have Basel in Switzerland. Um, we have Vienna and Graz and Austria and seems um, like a cool update. I amazing. mean, this is stuff that people amazing. are into yeah, like this game for revolution. like, I feel like most people that like this it's game awesome. turn down but the simulator stuff to zero and region. just fly around so and see the sites. 100 of the most scenic places, the most famous landmarks, and we call those POIs and we sort of spread them throughout the throughout the simulation. And um, and we also added airports. We did Lübeck and Stuttgart in Germany, and Klagenfurt in Austria, and St. Gallen in Switzerland. And, um, and what it ties it all together is, is, is missions. We're having new uh, uh, discovery flights, we have new um, landing challenges, and we have new um, uh, sort of tours of the country. So they, they fly you around all the awesome looking places and really yeah, celebrate dude. the beauty of the I only this played maybe Earth. like a dozen hours this, or something of Horizon 4, uh, but of, it was of very that, fun. Of Germany, Austria, and Horizon 5, so I think I'm going to probably get very into because I've got several friends that are going to be very into it. You and know, like, that is really incredible. Uh, all the <laughs> I guess I can't talk about it because it's NDA. The, the be so never mind, but I think you're already aware what I'm, yeah, I think it's, what I'm it's, talking it's really about. Cool a certain Ubisoft you know, game I played recently that I would not normally be interested we are, in. We are, um, that was very fun because I was playing with when friends. You, when you study aviation, when you love aviation like we do, um, you actually realize that a lot of regions of Earth have a very special relationship with flying, with yeah. aviation. Sometimes it's, you know, the first experiments with aircraft or a famous pilot or uh, a feat of aviation or, or like a local manufacturer. So we thought to ourselves, why do we not use these world updates to celebrate the planes? <clears throat> so we're announcing a new series. Yeah, I'd be good with seeing some Horizon Legends. 5. I don't know that I need to see much more of it, like driving around open well worlds. Like in that region, but this one's in Mexico, in right? Not so much. Yeah. And, but or just South America in general? To highlight this, to bring these awesome machines I think it's to Mexico, a worldwide right? audience. So for World Update 6, we picked like I'm already uh, a German sold. plane from the 1930s. I, did, I like it's the Forza Horizon games now. In Germany, it's actually is lovingly named uh, Tante U, so and U. And we think of us as sort of a digital, digital preservation. So we really want to get these planes to an extreme level of detail. We're going out of our way to really go deep. So we're doing a full scan. We take full scans of the outside and the inside, as detailed as one millimeter, which is as good as you They're can really going deep. You can really do this. And then we're working with uh, for the Junkers, uh, these we work planes. with Bernd Junkers, who is the grandson of the original creator of the plane, Hugo Junkers. And he's helping us. He had a ton of inside and materials. Then we worked with an organization that is preserving one of the last surviving examples of the Junkers. So they let us scan and yeah. take photographs. And, and then we were lucky that to, to find a, a pilot that <coughs> actually flew one of those planes while it was still flying in the real world. And he what up, Ryan? Let us know, How's it like, going, man? Is the cockpit right? and the sounds right? Does it feel right in the air? How's work? Um, so we're having a blast working with these experts to really bring these, to celebrate this plane, to bring them back to life. 
So, so this is almost like you're creating like a digital museum for aviation inside Microsoft Flight Simulator. Yeah, I mean, it's basically that. Yeah. It's a museum with flyable planes. Yeah. So we're working with um, 40 museums around the world. And it's, it's honestly one of the funnest parts of the job. You, you end up working with these curators of planes. These are their babies. And they sort of see the tooth of time in the real world sort of nagging on their remaining planes. And they're so happy when we come in with our scanning equipment and we're basically capturing their planes. And they know that we can digitally present them in perpetuity and we're actually giving those scans back to the museum so they can do something with it just a, and it's a great collaboration and we're actually not just looking back in the history of aviation we're also looking towards the future so I have another announcement we are working with a fascinating German company called Volocopter yeah and they're making a um, an eVTOL air taxi for urban just traffic. Just fix some walks at a so gym, th they have heading a for an eye doctor, how, then a FedEx. How these drone type uh, machines basically connect people in large Hour cities. drive, so sounds like some good podcast time, sure some good Xbox, Gamescom time. The and that's coming out in November. I mean, you Show's were okay so far. That there's a what lot we like? going on in the flight simulator. Is there anything else? Uh, Dying Light 2 uh, looks good yeah, still. There's one more thing. Flight simulator. Um, yeah, still looks are, like flight I'm simulator. So announced that we've partnered with RARA. That's the Reno Air Racing Association, and they every That's year they put on something That's all we've seen so far. The, the Steel National. You like Flight Simulator, Ryan? Did you install it? And we're bringing this to Flight Simulator, so it's Did you this attempt is the fastest motorsport. Play it on your PC. I'm sure your PC can handle it. On Earth. Sure, mine could I too. I just little, never launched it. To look at. So race speed. Probably not a max settings. Definitely not a max we settings. We go into the danger say. zone, baby. Let's go ahead and show that. He did that <laughs> aviator glasses trick uh, more than once. This is the top gun stuff. Or just their general trailer. You know I like going fast, and you know I love being in the danger zone. When is this coming out? Man, these, these planes, they fly 500 miles, faster than 500 miles an hour, 50 to 250 feet above the ground. So you are definitely going to be in the danger zone. I mean, without going into too much detail, this Reno Air Race is actually the largest expansion we have since we launched on Flight Simulator. It's not just because we scanned all the famous race Yeah, Yeah, that would be cool with the flight them. stick. Um, this is also the first time when you can basically race against your friends and pilots ar across the planet. And so I also played older ones when I was a kid. I just, to I don't know, Simulator. I played it because it was, and it happened to be available to play on my PC. And, ask, when is it coming out? We are, this is coming and out I didn't have a lot to play at the time. So it's right I feel like now, time. with how many games oh, I have to play that are like you know I have really cool and fun speed, and have so gameplay I loops and stuff, to get my I don't think I would try Flight Simulator. Awesome, man. We got you covered. But by all accounts, it's great for what it is. So if you're into that kind of thing, no reason not to play it. Keep an eye out for extended look at Forza Horizon 5 later on in the stream. We'll hey, also talk with they Wasteland 3's game director about the game's next big DLC. But first, if you're an Wasteland Xbox Game 3 Pass subscriber, we have great news for you. Stop Dodgeball Academia. Are they going to show anything? What is this? I don't know what that game was. One that blows the world away. I feel like I've seen that four. It's just a general ad or are there actually announcements in here? Midnight Fight Express. I don't think I've seen this game before. Build a weapon that'll turn us into new ones again. Snow runner slot, yeah, that makes sense. Bushida. That looks kind of cool. That also looks pretty cool. This I have seen before.
Oh, and Sighted is on Game Pass? Hell yeah. I fucking love the demo of that game at the Steam. Whatever. Steam Summer Game Fest demo thing. Steam Demo Fest. Does Sighted even have a release date yet, though? Or is this an out today thing? Because, uh. I just started Curse of the Dead Yads. I don't need it out today. I want to play more of that. I don't want to play Psychonauts 2 tomorrow. Okay, just play day one. Not necessarily today. Yep, somehow they did it. They added even more games to Game Pass. But let's talk about what's coming up. We're talking Age of Empires 4, the game's creative director, and we're gonna see what's next for Sea of Thieves. But now we've got a new roguelike retro shooter that in grand retro fashion yeah, sends you did. plundering through shifting dungeons to defeat a mysterious Unsighted. terror. Let's I mean, that's all I needed to see. That, that game was amazing from the demo. Well, you know, Chris Tales was amazing from the demo and then it fell apart, so. Can't base everything off of that. Is this like the Dusk or whatever? One of those old school shooters? I'm sure they said what it was and I just missed it. Quake remake? No. What is this? Oh, kind of cool. Yeah, I think it. This gen is looking very strong for Xbox. Just the, like, they put in the groundwork last gen with Game Pass, and now it's an undeniable thing that everyone needs to match or uh, get left behind. Sony's got their exclusives, though. That's carrying them still. Over 19th on Game Pass into the pit. That looks cool. Well, I am here with creative director of World's Edge, Adam Eisgreen. And Adam, I'm so excited to talk H4, of course, because you've brought something a little different and very special today. Uh, yeah, I have. So, you know, so far we've been showing everyone kind of what age looks like from in the game, you know, when you're playing it. You've gotten to see a lot of footage of that. And we've also shown a little bit of our campaigns, mm -hmm. right, through uh, when we unveiled the Hundred Years' War and showed Joan of Arc. But we have yet another way in Age of Empires 4 that we're kind of bringing history to life that we haven't talked about yet. See, you do this to me. You put me in suspense. I want to know more, so let's go with it. Well, let's hear more. Okay, wait, you get one moment of suspense. Was the game called Into the Pits? Okay, that's enough. <clears> so, <throat> um, put it on. What, what we brought today is um, we the have list. these wonderful little videos that we've created that are interesting. Do you want to at least check it out? And they're about three to five minutes each. Mm -hmm. And um, we have over an hour of them total. Over and they're called Hands on Histories. And what they are is a great way to like deep dive on certain fun subjects from the cultures we're representing and just from medieval history. Excellent. Well, I hear you've actually brought one of those segments that you're going to share mm -hmm. here for the very first time. Yes, um, I have. Uh, we are going to show you the segment on one of the most popular units from Age of Empires franchise and a fan favorite, the trebuchet. Excellent. Well, this I got to see. Mm -hmm. Let's take I'm not an Age of Empires guy or an RTS guy in general. I've just always been bad I at come them. Come to wait, trebuchet. So I'm not particularly excited for this, but I'm sure it will be very good for the people that are it. Engines. A catapult capable of smashing down castle walls from great distances. At Warwick Castle in England, they've built a replica, one of the largest in the world. Originating in 7th century China, by the 13th century, Trebuchets had evolved into devastatingly powerful weapons. Such a simple design, nice but so effective. It has several key features. Yeah, I think I've done what I really want to do on Geeky Island. With a weight at one end. In about nine hours. The story's only like three to four. The to prime, the six-ton weight is raised. And then I did all the side quests, wheels. the mythic quests. So this is one of the wheels. One of two. On the hot springs, very important to see Jin's butt as often as possible. Which would lift the counterweight, weighing six tons. It's based on muscle power alone. 
Mm, there's a couple other things I did. I didn't find everything like I did in the base game, just because I'm out of stuff to upgrade and I'm not earning anything for doing anything. Yeah, I mean, if you do everything on the island, you you can easily get like 20 hours. I think Tom said he spent 20 or something. It's just because I did everything on the base game. I'm already max out on everything, so they added a few things, but by the time you finish the story, you're already pretty much done upgrading those. So I just did the stuff that's like, this is stuff I want to do and it's fun to do in and of itself. In order to weaken the castle walls or even breach them, you had to make sure that the projectiles hit the same spot every single time. For each projectile to follow the same trajectory, they all had to be the same weight and shape. To achieve this, Masons used a gauge. Now I'm gonna load this projectile into the sling. Oh, this one must weigh about 25 kilograms, but some projectiles can get up to 150 kilograms. That's the weight of two men. Jeez. Trebuchets were also used to throw burning tar, beehives, even dead bodies. Anything to cause maximum distress to the enemy. Did you hear that? Whoosh! It was the counterweight trebuchet's lethal combination of power and accuracy that made it the ultimate medieval siege weapon. That's pretty cool. Just seeing that thing rebuilt. You know I'm gonna say trebuchet. <laughs> don't care because that is awesome and remarkably unique. Something you don't see in games very often. Yeah. So you know one of the the things when we were looking at what we were gonna do with Age of Empires IV, uh, there's a phrase I'm really fond of, which is history is only as interesting as the people who taught it to you. Mm -hmm. And you could say that about any subject, really, right? But I think the great thing is, is when you have someone that's so enthusiastic and passionate about history, it really comes across. And we wanted to be that kind of teacher for history. And um, yeah, for sure. There's, there's so many games to juggle. I just picked up Aliens Fire Team as well, which we tried to do, which is we tried I really to, just like, picked up because uh, some of the people I know are picking it up, and I'll wait for them to invite me to play co-op. I definitely will not be playing that solo. Overlaid to show you the history. So that's not one that's like constantly prescient on my mind. Like I need to play this right now or anything. Ourselves and Relic partnered with this amazing group in the UK called Lion TV, and they've done production on an amazing amount of shows and documentaries for the BBC and won every award you can imagine for media. And um, they travel to all of these locations in all these different countries to meet with these subject matter experts and get all of this great footage on how things really worked and how things were made. And it's been delightful. But yeah, hey, for Psychonauts 2, and, I've never know, played any No More Heroes, so I will not play oh, 3, I don't I think. I love it. Now, you, you also, of course, and I'm actually you bunch, as you mentioned, of these kind of hoping for bad reviews because I counterpicked that, but, you know, what always still hoping that games are good. Favorites you got coming up? Oh, well, favorites. Just saying, I want to be sad if it was bad. I think my personal favorite is one called Medieval Surgery. And I'm going to let your imagination go with what we might show and what we might talk about in that one. Yeah. Um. But the thing I love about them is that they, they, they go all over the place. So, you know, we've got ones on warfare and castle building and like how they kept flaming arrows from not going out when she shot them. And um, so, uh, but we've also got all of these ones on, you know, like illuminated history and um, hawk falconing and, you know, like horse taming, armor creation. Um, and even there's even one on Mongolian instrumentation, which is really cool because those instruments, we actually use them in the soundtrack for the Mongols when you're playing as them in the campaign. In, in yeah, the this game. game seems really cool I for mean, if you're I, into I history and into RTSs. Guys, Age of Empires, or either one, really. Yes, you don't really need both. Different way. And I also love to mention Which I do like history. You Not like a hardcore so history nerd, but research. I do like history. It's so great to see this approach being used. I just hands -on have never been remotely good at an RTS. What was that approach like to sort of, you know, sell going forward, especially since it's such a unique in-game experience? Well, the cool thing was it was there from day one. It was one of the things I was really wanted to do is try to tell these stories in a different way. And, but I'll tell you, like full disclosure, it's been insanely nerve wracking because <laughs> we're trying something completely different that no one's ever done before um, in a game, right? We're mm -hmm. like, we're history, but we're a game, but we're teaching you things, but you're having fun. And um, finding that middle ground has been really challenging. And you know, I've, every time we've tried to show, we've shown the campaigns or we've shown these hands-on histories, I've been like, oh God, is it gonna, <laughs> it's gonna work? Like, 
people are gonna like this. And the great thing is, is so far, everyone that's really experienced the entire thing put together mm -hmm. have just been like, wow, this is great. And it's so different and kind of cool and refreshing. So, uh, whew, so far, so good, <laughs> right? But yeah, it's been- it's uh, Baldo been also on, get all this done and put was it Friday? Together. I think well, it's Friday. I love that you mentioned Journey because we are uh, assuming like it's good reviews. Oh I want to check that out. That yes. top down, Zelda like with a Ghibli art style. About Age of Empires four. I know they're all chomping at the bit. Oh well, you know, October twenty eighth, uh, we are launching the game. Uh, you can go to ageofempires.com to learn more about. The yeah, I think title. I own StarCraft really, really two excited. and both right of the now, like go the expansions or Steam because I wanted to get into right it. Now. I just and never found time. Like, I've already got one, Xbox so many genres that I'm into well, with games so constantly coming down. Just grab the game and start playing. So, it's like, but why yes, am I, I trying to add another genre to like onto yeah, the pile? So Gamescom which I'm constantly yes. doing. 11 a.m. Pacific time. Um, uh, it's called Baldo the Guardian there, Owls. So if you're a fan, you probably should tune in. A bit of a tease from Mr. Ice Green. Mm, and I like it very much. Adam, thank you so much for joining us here. Always a pleasure, Kate. Always a pleasure. Age of Empires 4 looks fantastic. So I cannot wait. October 28th. Hope it's good. You. Now we have tons Both because up I'm excited for today, it and because I drafted it. For State of Decay 2 and an extended look at Forza Horizon 5 with our friends at Playground Games. But now let's catch up with Paris, who's gone from flying the skies in Microsoft Flight Sim to a different kind of cloud. That's right, Kate. Xbox Cloud Gaming is already available on Windows PCs, mobile phones, and tablets. And now it's coming to Xbox consoles. The future with cloud gaming yeah, is looks bright. Charming. No waiting to install, no running out of hard drive space. No I could see it being patch, in like the no eights though, because uh, the combat looks a little rough, play with your at least from see what I saw several months ago. Will bring people together without barriers. But top down Zelda games have never had like amazing. So I think about cloud oh yeah, it's are great. Yeah, I know. Gaming, I'm just looking for those huge hits really that are going to take down the future, this guy Crypto something and came from the future with his picks, you know. Uh, no, but I, I don't think combat's ever been, like, amazing or anything in top-down Zelda games, or in Zelda games in general. Cloud gaming's not phenomenal. the main draw. That's pretty great. I mean, this is, that's pretty awesome. This actually looks so good. Games are large, and you want to keep the ones that you know you love on your hard drive. Xbox Cloud Gaming is about being able to discover the new ones right away. It's super exciting that for our Game Pass Ultimate members, they will <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see that Cloud for sure. On whatever console they have. Cloud gaming is really about looking at how people play differently. Uh, I know me in particular, sometimes I just have 20 minutes. It should be as easy as finding the game that you look for on your console and just jumping right in. We're targeting 1080p at 60 frames per second. What's crazy about this is like the latency. This is the kind of stuff you need with cloud gaming. Oh, 60 frames, that's actually very smooth. The process itself to get into cloud gaming feels like you're playing on console, right? You go, you find the game you want, you press play. It's so easy nowadays. I would you not play Celeste on cloud gaming. Much play any, any kind Xbox of input delay on Celeste best. would be abysmal. If my friends have titles that I don't have yet, I can just wait for them to send me an invite. It makes content just so much more accessible. I really love the flexibility. It's awesome. Everything that Xbox is doing right now is just getting rid of the limits of having to be on a specific platform or a specific console. Play on PC and mobile and now on Gen 8. Yeah, Gen 8 consoles can play Gen 9 content. Isn't that so cool? With cloud gaming, we have the ability, because you are connecting to consoles that are in our data centers, to allow the Gen 8 customers, the Xbox One customers, to play games that their hardware wouldn't have been able to play without. Gen 8 and There's Gen 9 so is not language I when it comes to thinking about have how heard content to refer to the consoles. Let people play Usually it's just to. next gen, last gen, uh, yeah. current gen. I'm ready for cloud gaming right now. Let's do it. When's the release date? When does it release? I mean, do you think it's the idea that like they're going to be doing an August annual 9th, or semi-annual console, the so they want to be able to say Xbox Gen 10 on for the, the next Xbox one or something? S and X, with beautiful and rich visuals, without coming up with the weirdo names every year, or every two years, however often they do that. Updates, oh, hello. This is the perfect opportunity to relive Cinema's journey or experience it for the first time. And if you haven't played this, do yourself a favor. 
grab a pair of headphones and immerse yourself into this world. Agreed. Speaking of unique experiences on Game Pass, the Xbox Plays team will be taking a look at some ID at Xbox titles over the next few days, including 12 Minutes and The Big Con. They're also talking with developers from Halo, the Master Chief Collection, Forza Horizon 5, and Destiny 2. So join the live Q&A to get your burning questions answered. You can catch all of those streams on twitch.tv slash Xbox. Speaking of Forza Horizon Probably won't be 5, watching don't any forget of those, our friends at Playground Games will give us an extended look stuff at all their week. monument to motoring in Mexico later on. Here we go, that Forza Horizon. never before seen areas of the game map plus cars that have never been in the Forza franchise before. I've loved everything I've seen of Forza Horizon 5 so far, and I can't wait. Now, Kate, there's more games to check out, right? Well, right, you are, Paris. Let's okay, talk about the three. Yet. Their newest DLC introduces us to a new cult, hmm, the Cult of the Holy Detonation. Holy detonation is life. Yeah, I think cloud stuff is cool as long as you're playing the right games on it. Some games, just any input delay is going to be murder to play on. Set on a righteous path. The holy detonation's life-giving glow should be shared with everyone. May the light of the holy detonation purify you. Join us, Rangers. The LC is coming out fast for that. I think the last one was like June or July. With new patches, bug fixes, and added features, like a fine wine, Wasteland 3 just gets better with age to really savor the game's bouquet. We're talking with in Exile game director, David Rogers. David, thank you for joining us. I'm super stoked to be here, thanks. So in the trailer, we saw that the DLC is coming out on October 5th, mm -hmm. but we know, you know, in Exile, Wasteland 3, you guys have been working on this for a very long time. So can you kind of talk about that journey? Yeah, our dev team has been working nonstop full tilt trying to make Wasteland 3 the best version of itself it could be. Over the past year since it's released, we've added features, we've balanced, we've listened to the community, we've fixed bugs, added stability, and I really think that the version that we have now is the absolute best version of the game, and if you've never played it before, now's an awesome time to jump in. Well, congratulations on, on everything that you've been doing with Wasteland Thanks. 3. Now, this DLC is called The Cult of the Holy Detonation. Mm -hmm. Now, talk about that a little bit. Tell, tell me what's go gonna go into this DLC. Right. What, what should we be excited about? Right, so you've heard of uh, Cheyenne Mountain, right? Yes. For, for those who haven't, Cheyenne Mountain is this uh, top secret military complex buried deep in the heart of Cheyenne Mountain in the middle of Colorado. It's designed to outlast a nuclear winter. Yeah. And so when you hit level 16, a f old friend calls you and says, hey, I need your help securing this secret military base and all the secrets within. And as soon as you get there, you find two warring cults battling over supremacy, trying to take control of the holy detonation, which is this pre-war science experiment that they worship as a god. Yeah. And, uh, you know, these cultists are insane. They're mutated. I mean, this just sounds totally like the first mad. town from and, Fallout 3. Uh, all they want to do is share the holy radiation with In terms you of and your lore. entire It's a little different, team. but... How generous. Yeah, that sounds a lot cooler than some of the cults I may have joined in the past. <laughs> but this is typical Wasteland fashion. We're really going to be able to get in there and mix it up, right? Right, right. So you and your ranger team insert yourself right smack dab in the middle of their holy war, which, you know, what could go wrong? Yeah. And this is a Wasteland game, so you decide everything. Choice and consequence is our bread and butter. And so you decide who lives, who dies, who gets screwed over, who takes charge. You're deciding the fate of the cults, the holy detonation, Cheyenne Mountain, and ultimately all of Colorado. This is really your game to craft and mold. That's, that's awesome. So the last expansion was the Battle of Steel Town, right? Yeah. You had giant robots and things like that. So, you know, what, what are you going to do, do to actually top something like that from the last expansion? Right. So we wanted, like, returning players to yeah. find something that they could never find in another version or, like, in previous versions of Wasteland yeah. 3. And so we built this as a Wasteland-style dungeon crawl. 
And in there, you find this awesome mix of mystery, exploration. Yeah. You're meeting these crazy cultists who have been locked in this like pre-war time capsule. And Tumor some of the raddest boss battles we have ever been able to build in a Wasteland game. That's awesome. I want to get back to, to the crazy cultists, but talk to me about these big boss battles. I want to hear more about that. Right. So we took the best parts of Wasteland combat and we breathed, breathed new life into it with objective-based combat, which are basically super yeah. rad boss battles. You, It's no longer you're like huddling in a corner, throwing down turrets, just going on murderous rampages. It's not about killing, it's about getting the job done. And so now combat doesn't end until the mission is over. We send you on proper combat yeah. missions. You're in there breaking into prisons, rescuing POWs. You're disrupting these high-tech cultist rituals. You are splitting your fire team and coordinating like you never it's have It's always weird when before. companies like talk about their sequels and, and their DLCs and they're like, this like time the we're their throwing their you into real combat scenarios. And really have to it's like, how they you're not doing a good job of selling all the people who have not played your game yet on playing your 40-hour game by saying this DLC is the real combat. Or just straight up murder combat. Now, Wasteland has a reputation for getting a little silly. Right. What are some of the weird characters we can expect in some of the story encounters we will we'll see in, in the game? Yeah, with this, with Cult of the Holy Detonation, yeah. we really got to cut our devs loose and just let them be yeah. creative and fun and silly. Like, N Exiles modus operandi is if some, if we're like brainstorming and something makes us laugh, we just put it in the game. That's just how we do yeah. it. And we pick up the pieces afterwards because we want to make something that entertains us. And then we know if we're having fun, our fans are going to have fun along with us. And so we got to explore like really letting you get deep into this like weird radiation cult and let you interact with them and talk with them um, and tell stories and like maybe even join them. Yeah. Um, and so like, for instance, one of the characters you meet, one of the first cultists you meet is this slathering beast. He's got like claws and fangs and spikes. Spike's yeah. jutting out, and he's drooling, but he's like the nicest guy in Cheyenne Mountain. Like, you meet him, and he's like, hey, guys, you should, like, come in here and, like, soak up some of these rads. It'll be great. Yeah. And he, he sherpas you in and lets you meet the whole cult. And like, and another one of my favorites is the Proteus. He's what you get if uh, if you took like 20 cultists and you like melted them into a big pile, kind of like I would do this with like a magnifying glass. Yeah. I would like melt like army guys and like GI Joes into a big pile. And he's wet and sloppy and gross and he's hard to understand and he needs a translator supposedly. And, but he's like your number one fan. And getting to build like this totally out there wild extreme character was a ton of fun to write for. It's a ton of fun to like explore like what makes this cult tick and he's an absolute blast hell even some of the weapons that you find yeah. in cheyenne mountain um they they're devolved cultists like there's one guy and he kind of devolved into this like vomiting bagpipe creature and he has this real like kill me vibe about yeah. him um but it, we get to play with these fun body horror <laughs> themes that let us jackknife between sort of like dark and serious and like goofy and funny which is a line that wasteland really loves to ride like you know a lot of really important stuff is at stake, but you know, it's the Wasteland's a pretty bizarre place. Oh, I can imagine. Now, we talked before, you've been working on Wasteland 3 for a while. There's there's already expansions that are out there, but say I'm a new player, say I'm I'm watching this right now and I'm mm -hmm. like, man, I want to get into Wasteland 3. What, what would you suggest for new players right. wanting to get into this? And like I said at the top, like Wasteland is like the best version of itself right now because of all the work we've put in over into it over the past year. Um, and so you can get the whole thing with the Colorado a collection. A remake of Mist That's with the Ray Tracing? Game, yeah. Plus uh, Cult of the That's Holy cool. Detonation and Battle of Steel Town, all for a discount. Or I feel like everything I hear about Mist is either have Wasteland 3. Just it's the greatest game it. ever made because it like started with the expansion pass. a genre, that basically. Awesome. Now, to kind of recap this or, a bit, we talked man, about, that is impossible to go back know, to. So I wonder if they're actually, bags, if they would change the way the game is. You know what I mean? If they would risk like... things that are going to be in Wasteland 3. But scaring off people who are super hardcore about here. Mist by changing things this, to make it more approachable. Right. This work of passion, it comes out on October 5th. And we're really stoked. That is awesome. So this is the cult of the holy the dead. Because the there's holy definitely been a couple times where I'm like, October 5th. man, maybe I should play so Mist. Thanks, Barish. Appreciate it. Right. But then I hear 8 million people be like, launched, yeah, it's basically impossible to go back to unless you played it back in the day. Incredible crossovers, including unique ship sets inspired by games like Battletoads, State of Decay, Halo, and more. Today, we're excited to announce a brand new special event that will award players an all new ship as a part of the latest wild crossover heading to Sea of Thieves. Better yet, this event begins tomorrow. So get ready to make some mayhem 
and let's get our first look at this very special ship. Borderlands. Guten Tag, everyone. Uh, really cool to be a part of this all digital Gamescom event. And we were thinking, what's the best way to kind of celebrate Gamescom and to be a part of this as, as Sea of Thieves? And so we're really excited to reveal that we're bringing the Mayhem ship set that you've just seen, a really, really cool ship that's inspired by Borderlands, into Sea of Thieves. Sorry. And we're giving all of our players a chance to earn it during kind of the Gamescom time period. So it's been really cool to work with the Borderlands team to bring this ship to life and giving all of our players the chance to earn it. Oh, see if these is one of those games that's fun to play when people invite me to play, but I don't think I would ever so go out of my way the kind of play it. Play it. Involved, but if you head to Lorena at any of the outposts... What I mean, a part of that is that it's just designed to be, to be played with multiple people. It's to go do to really not so fun so solo. Everybody gets a chance to, take to me, part I know in this awesome some people enjoy it solo. I don't know how. It doesn't seem like that kind of game to me, but... So that's the time period you've got to get your hands on the Mayhem ship set. And I think that's it from me. So, as always, I will see you on the seas. Play day one, PC and console. What is this? Hope. It's always been a dangerous world in Trumbull Valley. But now, it's hope that brings us back oh, is together. Is this like an expansion for State of Decay 2 or something? Or is it just a general ad for State of Decay 2 for some reason? Bonds. And in the face of a growing threat, hope. Greatest weapon we have. Bases. Okay, so it is an expansion for State of Decay 2, which is weird. I figured they had stopped development on my game at this point because they're working on 3. But sure. Welcome back to Trumbull Valley. Zombies themselves, it seems everything old is new again in State of Decay 2. And we have a guest to walk us through this Undead update. Please join me in welcoming Undead Labs Director of Communications, Wanda Russell. Hello, Wanda, how are you? Hello, I'm great. It's great to be here, talk about the homecoming update releasing on September 1st. We are very excited to get this into players' hands. You are indeed. So let's talk about the homecoming update. Uh, obviously, we are coming back to Trumbull Valley. Mm -hmm. We were there for Heartland, the update, back in 2019. Talk to me about the differences, and I'll sit right here and listen, because you're adorable. <laughs> so Heartland is the story mode within the game, but it's a very linear, narrative-driven experience. Mm -hmm. You know, players couldn't move their communities there. So that's all changed with the Trumbull Valley map. It is the fifth core open world map. It's fully remastered, and it expands into two territories that were completely inaccessible in Heartland. So players can return to Trumbull Valley with their communities, start new communities there, and really start exploring everything that the new map has to offer. So then would Homecoming be a sequel then to Heartland? Yeah, exactly right. So the events in Heartland uh, kind of play out. You see what mm -hmm. happens mm -hmm. in Trumbull Valley. So we think of it as the third part of our Trumbull saga mm. that began with the original Save Decay game, continued into Heartland, and now we see what has happened since then and what storylines might be coming to a close. Mm. 
So there is a lot for players to discover, a lot of environmental storytelling to find. I had a good time with this and, game. And, you know, uh, it hasn't changed. So this with isn't the trouble valley that players might remember. So that's going to be a We're not super far into it, well, though. Anytime you expand oh, dinosaur. From a valley, okay, I'm sold. A juggernaut of content, <laughs> pun intended. But I don't know. I mean, we're early the on the first the map, and I'm already getting now. a little bit of like fatigue yes, with the loops. Content. In fact, we're doing something. I feel like I don't Trumbull need a Valley fifth map, map to explore. There are items there that you can only find on but that map know. and nowhere else in the game, including 12 new hats and outfits. The game's clearly still got a community playing it, so they probably want a new map if they've been playing since launch. And on top of that, we are adding the game's 12th bounty pack. So that will be available uh, from the bounty broker across all maps. And I have to say, they are some of the coolest weapons I have ever seen go into the game. I'm so excited for people to find them. A juggernaut amount of content, and I don't care who yes, sees that second fun of the day. <laughs> that works out great. Well, let's talk about the State of Decay community, because it's absolutely an integral part to this entire franchise. And State of Decay being on Xbox Game Pass, how has that impacted the community? How has that impacted? the game talk to me about those uh, it's been fantastic and you know we have an amazing community we love them so much in fact one of the reasons we're doing Trumbull Valley as a map is because it was one of the most requested features from the community which also makes it very exciting for us to be able to say ah, we did it you get it uh, and we have a major milestone that we're celebrating Steve Decay 2 has 10 million lifetime players 10 million lifetime players Hang your hat on that. I absolutely love that. that really is grateful. Incredible, amazing news. Congratulations to you and the entire team at Undead Labs, man. Fantastic yeah. work. Uh, well, speaking of Xbox Game Pass, let's give me the deets one more time when it comes to the update. So the update releases September 1st. It's a free update for all State of Decay 2 owners, and it's included with Xbox Game Pass. If we're saying this, I assume Happy we're not saying State of Decay 3 here. <laughs> Thank you, which is unfortunate. very much. My pleasure. <laughs> Now we move from Trumbull Valley to the Lost Valley of Akria. This mystical location trades zombies for ancient warrior clans, forgotten temples of long dead god kings, and a healthy dose of hack and slash. All this awaits in Stray Blade. Stray Blade. This looks souls like he kind of. I've never heard of this. Have we heard about this before? This is a pre-alpha build. I mean, 2022. Hmm. This is bad. And 505 has been on a pretty good streak Straight lately. Blade, you discover the mystical Lost Publishing Valley wise. of Akria, a world which ranges from overgrown temple ruins to frozen caves and winding canyons. A game world that changes based on your victories and plenty of dudes to stab in blade-to-blade -blade combat. If that weren't enough, you even get a fuzzy little pal to help you out. Between the epic fights and this small guy, there's clearly a lot going on here. So let's hear more from Point Blank Games about Stray Blade. Hello everybody, I'm Leonard Kausch, Game Director at Point Blank Games, and today I will show you Stray Blade. Stray Blade is an action RPG where you play a rogue adventurer who is exploring the ancient valley of Akria with his companion, a witty wolf named Boji. Unveil the history of the Forgotten Valley, muster the powers of the three Akrian metals to restore balance to this war -time. Definitely got some double A game energy, that but I don't dislike hat. that. As well as the war. Combat and exploration are the two key elements of our game. Let's dive into the combat first. Double A's have been making a pretty big return lately. Strategic anticipation There's been some good ones. Attacks, with split second blade to blade reactions. It is the high noon of skill based melee weapon combat. To achieve that, we put our hearts into creating fluid, well-readable animations and epic cinematic finishers. You can choose from multiple weapon categories that can be combined to fit your playstyle. Now, let's take a look at the exploration. Korea's colorful world ranges from overgrown city ruins to frozen caves and winding canyons. Together with your companion, explore the deepest corners of an ever-changing world, bristling with adventure. Every discovery holds treasure. Find rare materials, recipes, weapons, lore pieces, and beautiful places. Change is part of your journey, where every victory impacts the world around you. When you die, time keeps moving forward. Enemies can't stay dead. New foes invade camps that you were weakened. And when Boji revives you, only one thing is certain. The change you brought shapes what now awaits you. And of course, get ready for epic boss fights.
We hope you enjoyed the first look at Stray Blade, mm. which will be out next year. And keep an eye on our Seems social media channels for more information. Seems like they're going for an open world Souls-like in the year that Elven Ring is coming out. So well, that might not go super next great for up, them, but one of we'll the see. Most unique games finally comes to Xbox. Yeah, unique. As in, my evil twin murdered four of my husbands because they secretly are in love with me. Unique. In case that didn't tip you off, we're talking about Crusader Kings 3, the medieval grand case strategy the giant and screen behind you didn't tip us off. You trying to defend your royal line from those that would conquer your kingdom. No. I always make fun of the people apparently. hosting these things, yeah. but I mean, it's, it's an impossible Xbox task, an and most of them do a fine job. A direct port, meaning that the UVine controls have been these two are doing a fine job. To bring that grand strategy experience to a controller. Not to mention bringing the grand strategy experience to my comfy living room. This lady actually reminds me a lot of Greg Miller, who I think enough, does a really good job with these kind of things. Three, now, coming to Xbox consoles. My son, we must never forget the crimes committed against us. Your father sought his glorious revenge and failed. He never understood that the greatest. Yeah, it's like they have a script that they're supposed to read, but they also need to like feel like real humans that actually are excited about the things they're talking about. It's different than reading a script for, you know. A movie or a play or whatever where you're playing a character in a world like you are just supposed to be you a human that likes these things but also read the script please the real game is played across generations you see real strategy requires cunning Yeah, I never even installed it. Crusader Kings 3 is wild. You really have. That's coming to Game Pass. I'll probably give it a shot. I just, the King of I don't know how much I would get into hobbies. it. We've all gotten into some weird stuff this past year. Weird like diving into people's brains and exploring their mental universes projected into a psychedelic 60s wonderland kind of weird. Exactly that kind of weird, which means I am so excited for Psychonauts to finally get a sequel. It has been so, so long. There really is something special about Psychonauts, isn't it? There really is indeed. Now, think about this. 2005, when Psychonauts originally came out, was a different time for gaming. Most of the biggest games that year were talking Resident Evil 4, Battlefield 2, Call of Duty 2. They were great games, for sure. But they were all big, beefy shooter games. Meanwhile, Psychonauts had humor, whimsy, and surprisingly heartfelt moments. It was an oasis of color and humanity in an era when games were increasingly turning grimy, dark, and combative. Not to mention having some deceptively deep character moments. That's why the original is considered a cult classic. It has been a long time coming, and it is finally here. Enjoy this long-awaited launch trailer. That's a weird trailer. script to like uh, hype up Psychonauts 2 by kind of uh, dumping on the way the industry has gone in terms of like dark, gritty combat stuff. When a lot of the stuff we've seen here is dark, gritty combat stuff. Yeah, they don't need to. I mean, I guess this is just the launch trailer, so that's fine. But. I have avoided everything possible about this game. Like, I know a lot of people got to play the first three worlds and they put out big old previews, and I was like, no thanks. I would rather not have the first, what is that, like five hours or so of the game probably spoil. Did you forget everything I taught you about levitation, Rasputin? I'm not supposed to check out equipment to interns. You did what? Can we just no? Quit picking on the new kid. We were all new ones, in case you forgot. I've got eyes on the target, and I've got eyes on me. <laughs> all I see is another unruly peasant. Oh boy. When 
I just beat Ramos of Ruin uh, two days ago, three days ago. Doesn't hold up as a VR game, really. Not in terms of other modern VR games that I played, but it was a fun story. A little in between. It wouldn't be the first time the Psychonauts underestimated Maligula's power. Fire! Leave it to me. I'm glad this game's reviewing well, and I hope a bunch of people download it because of those good reviews that would not have normally, so that that series can continue and not take another 17 years to do so. Well, it's clear I could not be more excited for Psychonauts 2 because I gotta be honest, me and that original yeah, It seems game, like it leads directly in. There's definitely if you know, you know, story events that happen. Level, it, is infamous, it, is brutal, it, it doesn't feel like any of the story events would be very difficult for them to summarize, considering the whole game is only like two hours long anyway. 16 years ago, Tim Schaefer and Lizette Teetree Montgomery, I am definitely dating myself, but you all welcome from Double Fine Productions. Thank you so much for being here. Tim, can you believe it has been nine, 16 years? I almost said 19 years. <laughs> yeah, it feels like only yesterday, but uh, it kind of was for Raz because the story picks up right where the uh, first game uh, left off. And even though it has been a lot of years, it's a, it's a game that matters a lot to us. We really love it here at Double Fine, and we know that a lot of fans, it meant a lot to them. And so we really want to be true to the spirit of the first game, uh, which is, is was it, we were able to do because we brought back a lot of the same voice actors. Mm -hmm. And we also have a lot of people on the team here that worked on the first game, as well as bringing on a bunch of new people like Lisette. Thank you. It was really important for us to, to carry the legacy forward, especially the cool style of Wonk that is very prevalent in the first game. Style of Wonk. Just Style of shirt. Wonk. I'm in there for it. Uh, let's roll it back a bit. Of course, this can be a kind of a trippy idea if you're not familiar. Psychonauts, they still jump into people's minds, I'm assuming, like the first game, right? So if you're so if a psychonaut sort of dove into my brain, it would be like a lot of Ted Lasso quotes and French bulldog memes. Am I correct, Tim? Yeah, that's what's fun about a Psychonauts game is that all the levels are different, just like every person is different based on their personality. If you could jump into someone's mind, what would it look like in there? What would the what would be the uh, color of the sky and like who would the monsters be? And in Psychonauts, you get to do that. Do you think Raz has if you had to bet, is there a level in this game in, fight those that people would say with their like trumps with their the Milkman level um, that is so of variety, lauded from the first game? Goes. It is very very good. Location, we can have any art style and coming up with uh, new levels. For Considering their views are so good. Was, uh, I want to put it past cute. them to have made a level I, I love good enough to surpass game, that. Let's talk to a little bit about how that kind of concept expresses itself in the game world. I mean, uh, Psychonauts 2 has got it all over the place, I'm sure. Yeah, it was really important for us to carry forward the unique brain worlds and unique levels from the first game and the unique style as well. So we were really focused on mm. uh, how yeah, we could bring I could see it, but it is a high bar. And also bring in new levels and enemies. Now, of course, it wouldn't be Psychonauts without new mental demons, and I'm sure it's happening in Psychonauts too. What does this mean? If it does it mean basically is that we're finally able to slap COVID anxiety in the face? Yeah, well, for sure. I don't, I don't know if you get to slap anxiety in your face, but you definitely get to slap some panic attacks, <laughs> and COVID definitely <laughs> caused a lot of those. Um, in addition to panic attacks, they managed to nail the mechanics that feel as new this time around. Yeah, like a. Are our favorites in gosh, I guess I hadn't really thought about that. In I hope they do. That, we also have like every level doubts. feels unique and different um, and enemies, enough. Like um, um, it takes two earlier this year. Events, that game just blew me away with how often they change events, mechanics are, are completely and make the game feel completely new over and over and over again. Our doubts are our slow, sticky. If this game pulls off anything close to that, it'll be really amazing. He is our. Uh, he's just, it energizes our whole combat troop. So we have a whole cast that you can battle and fight with. Including the new bad mood. Including the bad mood. Which is... It's an electric storm of feelings that you have to fight. Now, for those who haven't played the original, available now on Xbox Game Pass, by the way, wink. Uh, Tim, why is Raz so good at rummaging through brains? Raz, is, uh, he has some very special skills. He has two whole sets of skills, one being the acrobatic skills he learned growing up in the circus. He can balance on tight ropes, jump on trampolines, swing on trapezes, and that helps him navigate and get around to all kinds of interesting places. But he also has this other side to his personality, which is that he's a powerful psychic, so he can levitate objects. He can uh, t use telekinesis and pyrokinesis. He has uh, these powers, which people might recognize from the first game, as well as uh, three new powers for the second game. He has the ability to mentally connect 
thoughts together. And uh, he connect two thoughts and actually connect two thoughts together um, to solve puzzles and to navigate in this game. Uh, he has the power of time bubble, which is just change uh, and slow mm, down. Skill tree. I've never seen this before. That's exciting. Time. And he also has the power of projection. Like me, a skill tree. To pull an archetype, a personality, out of his unconscious mind and bring it into uh, the world that he's. Yeah, in. I'm sure. I'm like, sure they get weird in battle or in. If there's one thing Double Fine does well, it's let's get, talk about the story for get a second, weird. Because as the original Psychonauts, we saw Raz training to be part of an organization, and now perhaps he's part of a whole organization at this point. And are there other brain agents, other Psychonauts out there that maybe grew up in a completely different circus? Hmm. Yeah, we have a lot of new characters in this game. We do. We have a lot of new characters in this game. Um, as soon as Raz arrives on a, the headquarters, he immediately gets introduced to the interns. Mm -hmm. And the interns quickly tell him and show him how he fits into the organization. The bottom. They're right down at right the bottom. The bottom. <laughs> yeah, so earn his way back to the top again. He's no longer the coolest kid in, psych in summer camp. And much to his chagrin, his entire family, his entire embarrassing uh, circus clothes wearing family comes to visit him in front of all his new friends. And so they, uh, his, the, the interns find out that he's the awkward middle child of a circus family. Uh, each one of them has their own quirks and foibles, and some of them are even psychic. And so a lot of their story gets told in this game, including their backstory and how it relates to the foundation of the psychonauts themselves. Well, I like that. And of Ooh. course, as you might know already, I'm sold. But you, of course, already knew that. When can myself and the rest of the world exact some beefy, meaty revenge? 10 hours. Uh, you can get back to the beef uh, and play Second Outs 2 on August 25th on Xbox Game Pass and PC. I believe it's there releasing at 9 p.m. tonight. Tim, well, 9 p.m. my time. Mind, thank you so much. And you know what? Extended midnight, uh, to what is that, midnight Eastern? The launch of Psychonauts 2. Thank you so much. We're very excited. Thank you. And you can catch more of Tim Schafer and ask him those burning questions about the newest game in the fan favorite franchise in our Xbox Play stream tomorrow. But first, we're going from cleaning out mental cobwebs to cleaning up alien planets in this supremely satisfying 4K60 trailer for The Gunk. Well, it's not expecting to see this, and I'm very excited about this. I love all the studio's games. I just finished Team World Quest like a week ago. Cover it's their first attempt at like a full 3D game. First attempt in a very long time at anything that's not Steam World. This planet is literally a paradise when the gunk's gone. Are they going to give us a release date? No, they're not. I did not say Game Pass there either. Oh, there it is. Cool. That is very good we news. We have talked about so many incredible games today, and it's hard to pick a favorite, but let me just say, it is so cool that State of Decay 2 is expanding Trumbull Valley. Come on! And hey, you know what? Great job on that Flight Sim interview. Oh, thank you. I mean, talking to Jorg is, is always a blast, and Flight Sim is such a special game to me because, I mean, it's literally letting me travel the world. But I was staring daggers of jealousy watching you talk to Tim and Lizette over at Double Fine. Well, I will say this, I understand, but you got to play Psychonauts 2 already, so I don't even want to hear it. <laughs> That's true, but it's not the same as talking to the creators. Just trust me when I tell you, be excited for Psychonauts 2. I will say this as well, I am excited to see even more of Psychonauts 2 on our Yeah, I'm excited Xbox to see what that studio can do with presumably yes, a bigger budget, because that game Xbox looks Plays very good. We have all the week's news throughout the week at twitch.tv slash Xbox, so make sure to check that out. Before Kate and I let Playground Games take the wheel, let me just say that it has been our distinct pleasure to chat games and nerd out with everyone today. Oh, it's hands down the best part of the job for sure.
They closing out but with Forza? Far from done here. <laughs> oh no, far true. from done. Now in June, Playground Games announced that Forza Horizon 5, the highly anticipated follow-up to 2018's breakout hit open world driving game Forza Horizon 4, arrives on November 9th on Xbox consoles, Xbox Game Pass for console, PC, and cloud, and of course, Steam. And if you're watching our Xbox YouTube channel, switch over to our Xbox Twitch channel to see all this new exclusive content. And that is twitch.tv. They're not going to show it on the YouTube room, stream. Room experience. And if you're already watching on Twitch or one of the Forza channels, stay right where you are. Without further ado, let's dive Are they just talking about like an extended like two hours of Forza Horizon 5 controller, which is driving around or whatever? Pre-order today so players can have it in hand by November 9th when the standard edition of the game launches. November 9th. I already knew that, but still exciting stuff. I feel like there's not a lot of stuff in November this year. I guess the industry has trended more towards October than November lately, anyways. I'm trying to think of anything else. If you subscribe on Twitch. I'm not, not into like the splash patterns on my controllers. That's a big no from me. Charlie here and I'm at Playground Games with Forza Horizon creative director Mike Brown and Forza Horizon art director Don Arceta. Hello everybody. Hi everyone. Hi Charlie. Hey Charlie. Hello. How cool is this? That is stunning. Look at that. Well we obviously just saw a really cool video about it and I'll be the first to say there is an amazing influence of Mexican car culture and music literally splayed right across the front. Isn't that right? Absolutely. It just feels like it's a part of the Horizon Festival. Like it's just dropped out of the game into your lap. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. And there's so much we do want to show the fans and it's been quite difficult to decide where to start. So can you maybe tell us a bit more about the game, Mike? Sure. Yeah. So Forza Horizon 5 is bringing the Horizon Festival's unique Yeah, they have what, red, fun, black freedom, and white. The beautiful and vibrant Mexico. Players are going to set out across the largest, you know, most my Xbox open world for a long time now has let you design whatever controller you want on there. Yeah, and people think uh, that Mexico is Xbox just a Labs desert or a beach, thing or whatever. There's so much more to it, isn't there? Uh, that's right. Even though it does have pretty awesome beaches mm -hmm. and some a number of amazing deserts, it also has vast canyons, hidden hidden temples. Like I have awesome two white controllers because that's literally all they had at launch. They didn't even launch with the black or red one, the and I needed two controllers. So you've talked about how Forza Horizon 5 showcases powerful all new graphical features, but what more can you tell us about that? So yeah, our Mexican HDR sky captures really illuminate the world to the point where you feel like you're really there. And thanks to the Xbox Series X and S, ray tracing is utilized in Forza Vista to really make our cars look more true to real life. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll encounter the smallest of details as you travel throughout the world, all rendered uh, with, in striking realism. Oh, that's such an exciting overview. I cannot wait. And next up is something we know that Forza Horizon fans have definitely been waiting for the most. Mike, what exactly is that? Yeah, that's right. We are about to reveal the cover of Forza Horizon 5, featuring the incredible Mercedes AMG One and the 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands. Should we take a look? Let's do it, yeah. Now, I like driving across the countryside in these games, but I'm not a car guy, so this does nothing for me. Which is probably why I fell off Forza Horizon 4 after like 10 hours or whatever, because most of the unlocks in that game were get more cars. It's like, thanks, I just want like a good one that drives fast and then I'm good. Yeah. very different ways to explore Mexico. So 100%. what I want to know is why those two cars were chosen and what players can expect when they get behind the wheel. Yeah, so those differences are exactly why we chose them. The Mercedes AMG One marks the first time a car features Formula One hybrid technology almost one-to-one -one from track to the street. And with the 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands, 
um, you know, that's primed for rugged off-roading across Mexico's vast terrain. And I'm certain people can't wait to see more of what these cars can do in the game, so I don't think we should keep them waiting any longer. Mike, can you tell us about what we're about to see next? Yes, so in a few moments' time, uh, we'll be yeah, for sure. a Forza Horizon I think it was, Let's Go stream, and everybody should I think it was fun. I, like, I, I really enjoyed the weird content, stuff they did, like racing a train. Fun. I hope they have more of that in Horizon 5. Minutes of brand I know they've showed gameplay, like the pinata party races and stuff. AMG that seems, and that seems like a lot of fun to me. I'm into let's do a few normal races, and then Let's just start doing weird, crazy shit. Planes and a race under beautiful Mexican skies all the way to the Horizon Festival. Should we check it out? I think we should. Fast and Furious. Yeah, <clears throat> I reinstalled um, Forza Horizon 4 to play that LEGO stuff and then realized the LEGO stuff was not on there and I was like, eh, probably don't want to actually buy that, even though it seems fun. Uh, I want to drive into that lava, please, and thank you. control of the 2021 Ford Bronco Badlands atop of the towering, snow-capped Grand Caldera Volcano. See you on the other side! Driving on a volcano sounds pretty lit. I want to do that. Follow that car! Trust me! Yeah, we do it our way. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, we do it so much better. Yeah, we do it so much better. Yes, drive right off the bat. <laughs> and onto a racetrack. Very cool. So now we see the 2020 Corvette Stingray tearing up the asphalt towards a dust storm in the Mexican farmland. Outtrack the storm! No sigue adelante! Keep going! Yeah, I like that a lot, but I also love the Fast and Furious movies, so I just love big, dumb action stuff. Driving through a dust storm, that seems fucking great. Storm, yeah. This could get a little rough. Thunder in the jungle. Touchdown! Not even a scratch. Yeah, I can't wait to drive in that storm and just immediately hit a wall. Although I guess you do have your mini map on the bottom left you can follow.
good soundtrack, unsurprisingly. This game's always got the good tunes. I'm sure this is an actual song that's on the radio or whatever, and I've just never heard of it. I don't listen to a lot of modern music. I don't listen to a lot of music in general, outside of video game soundtracks. Yeah, that would be cool. They did that in the 360 era, right? Podcasts even? Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, I feel like the reason why they haven't done that is it probably had some, like, maybe not technical hurdles, but, like, litigation hurdles or something getting it in there for the last two consoles. Uh, and like, everybody's got a device that they can have beside them playing their music. They don't necessarily need it in the game, right? Even though it would be nice. AMG one at full speed across Mexico's sun-baked rocky coast. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, man, ray tracing. Racing games always look better than every other video game. Thank God that speed is ridiculous. I enjoy this because I can just like watch the countryside zoom past in an instant on the side. Which I will not be able to do when I actually play, because I will die. Sweet. You know, that was alright. Uh, it wasn't the levels of cringe that I was expecting based on their indie showcase last month? A couple weeks ago? I don't know. Not that long ago. There was some good stuff. I'm excited for the gunk, even though we didn't really see much of that. I'm excited for most of what they showed. They just didn't show a lot of, like, completely new things, like little add-ons for stuff that it's like, okay, I was already going to play that, but thanks. And yeah, that uh, little indie sizzle reel with Unsighted coming to Game Pass. I'm so excited about that. Look up real quick and see if Unsighted has a release date. If I can spell no, just 2021, so. But yeah, uh, let's see. I'll be back tomorrow. Uh, there will be no stream on Spelunkers tonight because Ryan has some D&D stuff going on, so he will not be streaming Pokemon. But I'll be back tomorrow morning at... What's tomorrow morning? It's 11 a.m., I think, my time. 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central... Uh, to do the actual full Gamescom conference, and I am going to try to line up that silly wing thing. Eating wings every time it says world premiere. I think that'll be fun. And I will also be back tomorrow night on twitch.tv slash Belunkers to stream Resident Evil 5 with Ryan. So, thanks everybody. And thank you Crypto. Thank you Ryan. Thank you anybody who was lurking. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye!